Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before. I'm here with McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Bustus Jester from Batman Endgame. Storyline I have not read. It's a Scott Snyder joint, so I assume it starts off very fun and interesting uh, and then just gets kind of dumb by the end of it. Of course, if you know me, you know I don't need a real strong connection to the source material to have some fun with a cool mech. And this is a bat-themed mech at that, so right up my alley. This was sent over to review by our great friends at McFarland Toys. They're giving us an advanced look at this massive mega fig. Let's look at him in the box and look how much he fills out that mega fig size box. There have been a lot of mega fig releases that really don't quite fill out this big box. Now the size is gonna come at a cost. We'll get into that in a minute. This guy's up for pre-order right now at all the usual spots. Let's get him out of the box while I'm getting him out of the box. If you're new to the channel, we just hit 13,000 subscribers, so welcome. New viewers, I've actually just recently done some organization of my homepage, so if you came here for reviews, you might check that out. There's a lot of other videos that are more general content for collectors of all types. Now let's look at this bat mech. Obviously more than a little bit inspired by Hulkbuster. I think that's generally the idea here. First thing you'll notice, of course, is the size of this dude. Tall, wide, thick chunky this is a massive figure and i did say that it came at a cost that cost is you get a lot of unpainted plastic here and that does leave it to be a little bit lacking makes the plastic look cheap of course it doesn't help there's uh, quite a few big uh smooth unbroken sections here and the places where there's just fewer sculpted details that unpainted plastic really stands out the areas where there is paint it really helps a lot the bat emblem on the front there's some light dry brushing on these forearms and the hands, of course, to bring out some of these really fun sculpted mechanical details. Of course, the fingers don't move. I don't think we were expecting them to. So not at this price point. Let's start moving this guy around. There's going to be some fun surprises and some shortcomings. The head, I was expecting this to be my least favorite part. Uh, I don't love the design, the eyes being tucked down here on the sides. It just doesn't seem particularly expressive. I do like these little bat ear things and the way they are flat facing and they really hug the rest of that head there. That's pretty neat. Then look at this. He actually has a ton of range at the head. I was not expecting this at all. It's on a double barbell under there and yeah, I mean it gets up all over the place and it actually does have quite a bit of personality once you lift it up there like that. So points right away, that's really fun. Torso, obviously this is just a big giant blocky torso, so he's really only got the waist movement. It rotates and rocks in different directions. Not very much front or back, but the side has some good action there. You can see the shoulder joints up there. They're very sturdy and ratchety. Shoulder armor has a tiny bit of give, but it's, it's pretty rigid. So you're gonna get up there. The only rotation is coming in at the bicep. I thought there would be some forearm rotation here. And he's got the single elbow and then no rotation at the forearm. That would have been really nice. So if you want the arms rotated at all, it's gonna be from the bicep. The hips here, you can see, this is really just a scaled up version of what all the normal seven inch DC multiverse figures have. A fun surprise here at the knees, looking at this guy straight on, you would think he probably just kind of has traditional humanoid knees, but they're actually these double jointed sort of goat leg knees here. So there's actually quite a bit of extend Ending that can happen there. This guy can take big steps. That's pretty badass. There's some movement at the ankle. Um, a little bit of rocking there. It's pretty tight, but I actually think if you carved out some of this plastic, you could get a little bit more movement. What's happening is it doesn't have a very big uh, channel in there to rock. I think it could get a little bit more action if if you shaved out some of the inside of that. 
Man, the big steps like that, that's pretty rad. And he's got these weird camel toe feet. I do wish there was a little bit more movement of those in there. So, so not having any extra action of the toes and the, not having any forearm rotation, those are my biggest gripes. I think this guy's gonna be pretty fun to play with. So you can get these legs fully extended. You'll also note that there is thigh rotation in there. Might be a little tight at first, but it's definitely in there. We'll scale him up with a couple recent mechs, the Justice League Megazord and care packs from Blue Beetle. You know what? Somebody's gonna figure out a way to like pop this head off and like carve out, dremel out a big uh, section here so you could have Batman like sitting in there, kind of Hulkbuster style. I'm almost compelled to try that myself because the head is kind of my least favorite part of the design. But I like this mech the most out of these three because the shape and the articulation of this, this one is the least traditionally humanoid. You know, the goat legs, the weird hooves, big chunky hands, those put it over the edge for me. It does not, however, have an advantage over the amp suit, which is still the best mech they've done so far. They fit little four inch riders in the cockpit. I'm gonna turn this one into a Riddler mech. So that is Justice Buster, a solid mega fig, pretty good value, worthy, uh, and I think worthy of the mega fig price tag uh, in terms of scale, some of the uncommon articulation, that makes for a great fun factor. The biggest drawback is just some of these spots where the unpainted plastic just reeks a little bit of kid's toy. I think a little more, uh, I think some extra rotation at the forearms, a little extra movement here down at the ankles would have made it an all time great A plus as it is. Uh, it's, it's just really, really good. All right, folks, that's all I got for this one. Thanks again to McFarland Toys for sending this over to review. Thanks again to all the subscribers, new and old, that have helped us reach 13,000. Looking forward to many great things to come. I will see you all on the next one. Peace out.